hello welcome to another video today we're going to be doing a whip and chat i'm going to be working again on the diamond painting of this image here this is called autumn wells by alan gianna um i got this from dreamer designs the last time i worked on this was i don't even was september 30 it is now october 10 so i did take a little break from this one i'm going to be working on this section here I, i'm going to do like just half of it i think this would be too much for the whip and chat you know unless i want the whip and chat to be over two hours long i think i'll just end it around there. I think that's half. Now I've, ha I've, ha I've been having a hard time cutting the plastic off of the Dreamer Designs one, probably because it's, it's thicker than I'm used to. So I've just been cutting this with scissors as opposed to the blade. Probably a little safer. But yeah, the, the the plastic over it is much thicker than, you know, the budget company. So <laughs> I don't know the right pressure. I end up like cutting it and nothing happens. And I do need some cover paper because I'm gonna do a little bit at a time and this is how I usually do that by covering some up and then working on the pieces that are like alive. Wait, let me zoom in a little bit. There. So I'm going to be working on this section here. I'm going to cover up that. So not everything is open. And let's start the next one. I'm going to start my timer. Because I do time myself because I don't know. I started, someone, someone, I think someone suggested doing it. And then I just did it and I just kept, kept going. So I've been timing myself. It gives, I think, a more accurate account of how long something takes as opposed to quantity of days. So this, this tray is from Add More Zest. I did get it from a viewer. Um, thank you, Jeanette, for sending it to me. It's becoming my favorite, favorite tray now. I, and this is the smaller Add More Zest tray. Um, I do ha have the bigger one too, but I, I've been finding I, I've been going towards the smaller tray first than the bigger one. And speaking of Add More Zest, I did try to buy the Advent Calendar diamond painting from last Friday. I was not successful. I had it in my cart and then I added two trays and then I saw how the two the two new trays but the ones that are smaller and then I was like okay how much is how much is the shipping gonna be I was like okay it's gonna cost me like 17 17 pounds to ship I was like okay what happens if I add another tray and I added another tray I added one of the normal color trays and and then I was like oh, okay the shipping is exactly the same so I went to go click check out and it was like ha ha the diamond painting is out of stock now. I was like, what? And you know what time I was trying to do this? So the her launch last Friday was like 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Or it was like, what did you call it? Like, yeah, I don't know. I just checked whatever it was in Pacific Standard Time. And it was 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I was trying to check out at 2.04 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So in then four minutes... I lost my opportunity of getting the diamond painting. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, 
Nope, I shouldn't have added that third tray. I bet you if I just went and checked out, <laughs> I just went, I needed a trash container because there was one of them, one of the drills was not the best there. So yeah, within, I don't diamond paint this way that well. I don't know if you notice, I multi-place up and down and left and right, I just don't multi-place as well. Um, but yep, within four minutes, I failed. I failed in getting the diamond painting. I think I read somewhere that she was going to, and then there's no R's there. I think she was going to get another stock of it, but I'm like, eh. <laughs> I tried the first time. I guess I'll, I guess it'll just depend on how long shipping is to the US because yeah, I tried the first time and I wasn't able to get it. So it might be a sign that no, Joan, you don't need another diamond painting. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently I was four minutes too late. <laughs> Triangles. Is it this one? I don't know if you could tell, but like the color swatch on the label is much different than what's on the canvas. It's like, it looks brown on this. It's green here, but the, the orientation of the triangle is correct. And I don't see any other triangle that it would match. So, and the drills are green. The tr this is my way of trying to figure out, like, I, this is why I don't like the triangles is to figure out how to diamond paint it is to put the tray in the right orientation. I think I need another one here. I like to put my tray as close as possible to where I'm diamond painting. And in the beginning, there's not enough, there's not enough drills put on to not make your tray stick to the canvas. So this is what I do. So someone asked me at some point how to multi-place and I did just turn around my double-sided tape so it's a little too sticky. So in case your your stuff is a little too sticky, that's my, <laughs> my suggestion is to to make it unsticky is to add a little fluff to it. Um, I, I, I'm not like 100% perfect on my multi-placing, but I find I have an easier time if I multi-place up and down versus left and right, which you saw me do right before this part here. And I've also found it easier to multi-place when there's already one side done. So I kind of just shove it in to the other side. And I only do like a five placer. Um, I don't really go any bigger. I sometimes do a seven placer, but that's about it. Uh, because I'm just not as comfortable with the bigger sizes as I am the small, the, the smaller one. I used to do the four placer because that was the plastic multi-placer that came with diamond painting sometimes. But ever since the metal multi-placers came out in pretty much like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, like every single size, I've been using the five placer. And I think I like the five placer because I can count five squares much easier for whatever reason. Anything more, it actually gets difficult for me to count. I don't know. Is It might be just a brain thing. The five looks like a nice even number to me, or I've just gotten so used to the five placer that I know how much there is. So yeah, I just kind of, I, I actually, I've seen folks do like this, like, like do this and then do this. I kind of just more use the edge of something to to match it so i kind of just go plunk straight down but kind of like like this or this 
instead of this. But that's how I've been doing it. And but I've seen both strategies of and just do, I think, what works for you. Um, I also like turning the tray in the same orientation that the drills are in so that it makes it a little bit easier. I, I'm not as good at multi-placing left and right, as you can see. Um, I prefer to do it up and down, and I could get by <laughs> doing it. I could get by doing it left and right, but I don't do it as well as up and down. And you could always get less drills. You don't if for a five placer. But I just find I have a little bit more control with the smaller multi placers than the bigger ones. And it does help when the drills are the right size so that there's no gapping. It it actually is much easier to multi place the less gapping there is. So the more gapping there is, it's actually, I think, harder to multi-place because then you you have spaces in between and you feel like you have to spread them out. So do I have any more of this one? Nope. But yeah, I'm just putting all that cover paper there just so that I don't dirty it up. It doesn't, it's not that difficult to add it. So what is that? That's a sideways hammer thing. <laughs> okay, it's this one. So I don't have any of it past that, so I'll just... Yeah, I don't have anything past that. I have actually very little of this, so let's hope that there's enough. No, that's not the right one. The orientation of it is the other way. I was like thinking, this, this is a really blue color. <sighs> okay, that's not it. Okay, it's this one. See, I wouldn't think it. This looks brown. Do you see that? That looks brown. This is a gray color. The drills are gray. While this one looked like it probably matched the color a little bit more, but it's the wrong orientation. That's what threw me off. So yeah, here is the, I guess, hammer in the right direction. This is why I don't like the symbols. It makes you... And then I don't like it when they have the symbol twice. Like, seriously. <laughs> and that's why you hear me complain about triangles, but things like this is bad too, when there's two of them that are that. All right, so it's actually been a while since I've done a whip and chat. I think it's been like two weeks. So meanwhile, in those two weeks, um, I said, I think in the last whip and chat that I was going to Yakima uh, for work. So I've since come back from Yakima. So it was, it was interesting. Like I've never been to Yakima. So it's a bunch of, I guess it's, it's, I kind of feel like it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's in Eastern Washington and Eastern Washington has, I think like different, a different look to it. Like the trees look different. The, um, the weather is a slightly different. It was a little bit warmer over there than it was, is in Western Washington. And yeah, it was, like I said, it was, it was different. But I was, I'm curious because I was, I'm curious about house prices or whatever. I looked up the house prices there and I'm like, okay, it's you think it's in the middle of nowhere, but house prices tell you, nope, it's still pretty expensive over there. Not as expensive as Seattle, but much more expensive than you think. <laughs> but yeah, that was interesting. It was, it was a management meeting kind of thing um, for, for the group. And there are, I think, two, no, wait, two, no, is it three? I think three people that are, um, is that the right one? That's the dreaded triangles. There are three people in the group management group that are stationed out of that 
office, so they didn't have to to make the trip, but a large majority of us did. <laughs> because its headquarters is actually only about an hour away from me, so that one apparently is close enough that we don't get travel to go to. But yeah, it was it was interesting, like just just the just the difference just in the trees was different. Um, we took the, the scenic route, so we went past um, Mount Rainier National Park. So I don't think Mount Rainier was visible. It like Mount Rainier is one of those you go visit the national park, and you could be like right next to Mount Rainier and still not be able to see it <laughs> because it depends on the cloud cover, I guess. But I did get some some fruit since they do have, I think it's the more agricultural area of Washington, so they do have like, you know, just picked off the tree fruit. Oh, and then same week, it was a busy week, that same week, um, we also had our fundraiser, fundraising drive, where I said I volunteered to get pied in the face um, to the highest bidder. Yep, I, I got pied in the face. Uh, it was actually um, the organizer got some of, you know, those aluminum pie tins and then got some whipped cream, you know, those aerosol whipped cream and the winning bid winning bitter got to put the whipped cream on the pie tin so they could put as much as they want and then they they pied us in the face there's pictures in the in the office of all the supervisors getting pied in the face there are four of us that are stationed well like three supervisors um and one lab director there are that are in my location so four of us got pied in the face <laughs> it was it was fun i smelled like vanilla like even after i washed my face i smelled like vanilla the organizer did give us some hair shower caps i guess i guess that's what they are and so at least my hair didn't get the whipped cream in it but yeah no i still smelled like vanilla no matter like after i washed my face and um put because i brought my face lotion in too I, even then i could still smell the vanilla but it was fun uh it was you know when i was talking to the other supervisor she was telling me the person soup um the person who was organizing the fundraiser told me she she apparently told the other supervisor joan already agreed to this i was and, so do you agree and now apparently i was the first person the organizer went to to agree to this thing because she was thinking that if i agreed to it the other supervisor would agree to it because the other supervisor i think would have agreed to it um but then I think me agreeing to it made a pathway for the other supervisors to agree to it. I was like, okay, apparently there's a strategy in asking for permission to do things. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. It was interesting. We were wearing our lab coats <laughs> for, you know, because it, it, it made a better picture for us to wear our lab coats. And plus our lab coats get cleaned every week, so, and we have three of them, so one of them getting dirtied, it's okay. So what is, what is this one? It's uh, this one here, yeah. So yeah, that, that was, that was interesting. Yeah. And
then what else did I do? Oh, so yeah, work work is is busy. Like I'm I'm in the middle of recruiting two people, and yeah, that's just uh, recruiting people is a lot of effort, and and it's slim pickings out there. Not not as many people are applying. I've heard this from the other supervisors that. Not as many people are applying as there used to be. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's because <laughs> my workplace, I pretty much blatantly put into the um, writing that you may have to be at work five days a week, which is true. I work in a lab. There is some work that you can do remotely on the computer for certain things, but unless you have the lab equipment at home, you can't do it at home. So I don't know if that deterred folks from applying or it's just pretty much no one is working. I don't know. Everyone wants to be a influencer because <laughs> I mean, I kind of am an influencer. It's kind of funny, but I don't know. People are all working in computers. I, and I mean, I, I mean, I'm not one of the, the, the positions I'm hiring for are not like low salaried positions. They're, they're a decent salary, uh, position, but I did notice. Okay. So I said that it was kind of slim pickings, like, like not slim pickings, but just like quantity of people applying was low. But the ones, some of the ones that did apply only kind of like their actual application was kind of like bleh, like, I don't know, like not answering these, the supplemental questions. Well, yeah, so, but that's okay. I, I found, I found a, um, two that I think were are good enough so I just need one of them to say yes okay so let's just continue on to here so the B and also yeah no my work right now also it's performance evaluation time at my work which as a person that was evaluated was never really my favorite part of like work. And now as someone doing the evaluation plus doing the evaluation, plus I do still have my own performance evaluation with my um, supervisor. Yeah, it's, I have to do both now. <laughs> and I have nine people I supervise. So I have to do nine performance evaluations plus one for my own evaluation. So I have to do like 10 evaluations. <sighs> yeah, I'm not a writer. I'm, I'm, I'm a scientist. The writing, the writing these up actually is not my strong suit, but it's one of those necessary things that is required at work. So I get it. Um, but unfortunately with me now having a different supervisor, I just and and me having a completely different role than last year, I can't just copy and paste my previous um, from my previous evaluation because we all normally kind of have to do like a self evaluation almost because yeah like the evaluator usually sends you questions that you have to answer. It's mainly I mainly said that. I mainly told my folks that as much as I could say I remember everything it, that you did in detail, I don't. So unless you don't want me to write anything about what you did, then you have to help me out. Because um, unless you want me to just write like generic, like this person showed up to work or something, you do kind of have to help me out in, in your evaluation. So yeah, I did send out a couple like evaluation questionnaires then that I have to somehow put into writing in the evaluation. 
<sighs> and and since it's my first one as supervisor, I can't just copy and paste from the previous one. Although I do have the evaluations from the previous supervisor from last year, uh, because I do have to go back to the last year's goals and things like that and, and talk about last year's goals. I do have last year's evaluations, but it's my own evaluation. And I kind of feel like I do have to Put my stamp in it so it's gonna take a little bit longer I think so yeah it's it's a it's a lot see and see this is all that work that's on top of my regular work so that's what's annoying about this time is I'm still I still have to do my regular work but now guess what it's performance evaluation time and guess what I still have to hire two people which which hiring people is actually not normally part of the work as if you know, if there's no openings. <laughs> but there, my my group is going through that transition phase right now. We have a lot of folks who are going to be retired in the next three to five years, I think. And, and I think it's like what the baby boomers or something. They're, they're retiring. And I have, I have, a couple people that yeah are gonna retire in the next three to five years I, I'm not I'm not really good at this diamond painting multi-placing left and right it just looks wonky um so yeah 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 it's gonna be it's gonna be fun times fun times it's actually yeah it's it's gonna be a lot of work for the next month and a half I think and okay so in in the middle of evaluation season we're having a science conference at in my group and guess who has to make a presentation <laughs> me so in the middle of me doing my regular work and doing these performance evaluations and recruiting for people I have to make a presentation. <laughs> yeah. I did give warning to the other manager, like the main manager of the group that, because this whole science conference thing is kind of a new thing, implemented, um, that I told her at some point, the folks who are willing to make these presentations because you know what not all scientists not not like people don't like being in front of other people um there's only a select amount of people who are comfortable being in front in front of people and giving presentations at some point all those people at my workplace are going to be have already have done a presentation and then you're kind of left with the same people doing a presentation over and over and that's unfair to them <laughs> so yeah i did tell them at like at some point you know folks are not going to want to do this and i think it's unfair it's not really like doing these presentations are geared towards the folks who are a little bit more extroverted and not shy and when you get into a science technical field unfortunately there's a good amount of us including me who are introverted and i kind of call myself well i kind of consider myself an introverted person forcing myself to be more extroverted to do tasks that are necessary <laughs> but I don't enjoy them. So yeah, some people love being in front of people and can just talk people's ears off. Uh, I'm not one of them. Although I can talk once I start talking. I just, you, you just, I just get like weird heart <laughs> beating fast thing and probably sweating. And it's not going to be virtual, so it's going to be in front of people, with people <laughs> in front of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not going to be till November, but still I have to work on the presentation. 
because I, if I don't, then yeah. And plus my, they want the first draft, like the first draft, like next week, I think it's next week. It's like, really? It's not till November 15. You already want the first draft, but that's fine. It'll force me to do it. It will force me to do it. And then plus I'll have some, some like um, feedback. Be like, Joan, don't talk about that. Joan, you need to expand more about that. I don't know. Something like that. Um, but considering right now who's doing the presentations in my group, um, you might have pretty much gotten everyone who is in my group who's willing to stand up in front of people and talk. So I don't know about next year. Maybe, yeah. I don't know about next year. We will see. I like it that it's crunching. That means that the, um, the amount of gapping is minimal. Like, the more you hear that crunching, the better. Because that means the, the drills are fitting nicely together. When you don't hear it, there's too much space. <laughs> I think I need more. But yeah, yeah. Lots of stuff going on at my work. Lots of stuff. It's not... I, I just kind of want, like, once I think May is done... I mean May. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what month it is. Once November is done, I feel like... December and stuff is usually when there is a lot less work so which is great because it works out with the holidays and so yeah I think once November is done I'll have it'll be awesome and then January tends to still be a little bit slow February and March is when things start picking up again um, but yeah I think I just need to get through November just get through November and, or at least I think everything will be done by before Thanksgiving. So I just need to get to before Thanksgiving and I'll be done with the hopefully craziness of my work. I'll, I think at, by that point, I will have hired the two people. I hope, I don't know. Um, and we will see. I, I, like I said, my, my first one, it was kind of... My first hiring thing, it's slim picking, so, but I think I have two good candidates, which kind of suck because then I have to choose between two people. Um, but we will see. We will see. And yeah, I just need to get through November and then I think, I think I'll be much less stressed in December. Uh, because I don't, I don't really do the crazy holiday thing, so, so holidays are not going to stress me out. Is this, what is this? Is this going to be like a light? No, this is just the top of the, this thing, I think. So, I was thinking, should I put something, a rhinestone in there? I thought maybe it was a light, but, yeah. All right, so let's see. Let's do... I just, yeah. Need to get through November, and I think I'll be okay. But it's still the beginning of October, or mid-October. I did go to Costco today. I bought four bags of candy. <laughs> Because that's how many bags of candy I need so that I, I don't run out. I was thinking about five, but I was like, eh, if I just run out of my four bags of candy and then all the diamond paintings I'm giving away, then I'll turn off my light and they could just go away. Um, be like, sorry, no more candy. But I bought four costco size bags of candy and then the person at the checkout was like, you get a lot of trick-or-treatos? I was like, I never have candy left over, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I never have candy left over. 
the whole time I've lived in my current house. It's crazy. My first year where I was like, oh, I'm going to buy two bags of candy. I think, did I just buy two? Yeah, I just bought two. Yeah. I ran out of candy right away. And then I think last year I bought three bags of candy. I ran out of candy. So this year I bought four bags of candy. I thought of buying five, but I was like, at some point I was like, at some point I just have to turn off my light. And they could, they could go hunt down the <laughs> houses that are still that still have candy, that came home later or something. But yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy in Halloween here. At least in my neighborhood. Probably because my neighborhood has sidewalks. And there's a good amount of neighborhoods in my area that don't have sidewalks. So they come here because it's safer, I guess, to have sidewalks. So, okay. Questions. Um, Judy asked me, where did I get the Metal Multiplacer? Um, I bought a set, but they were very bulky. That one looks very thin and nice. So this one, I don't remember where I get my multi-placers, but the budget diamond painting stores that I do PR packages for, they all have them. Uh, and just look in the tools. Uh, but I've gotten them in too many different places that I can't tell you, but I know like, like fan cells, GBFKE, DIY digital art, DP clubs, DIY shoes, one day saving. I have that many FG normal. <laughs> Um, everyday e deals. Um, do you, I don't know. I, I probably forgot someone, but they they have them in their. They should have them. The little telephone thing. Telephone. See, like, look at this one. It's another brown one, but the symbol is like doesn't look anything like that. It's green, but it's the correct orientation, so. Okay, JY says, um, your nails are so pretty, what color is it? Is it the gel manicure you showed in another video? Yes, it actually, these are, these ones, it's not the same manicure, I've already, this is probably my, I don't know, third one I've done after that video, um, but it is the same set as what I had unboxed from the Madame Glam um, PR package. And these are the same colors that I got on that. But this is, this so far is my favorite combination. This is the vintage pink with the Am I Clear on top of it. So it has the pink and then it has a sparkly I'm not sure how much it'll show on camera. It has like sparkly glitter. But yeah, no, this, it is the Madame Glam gel manicure set that I got. I've thought of buying more colors, but I'm like, I, I have, I've barely used the ones I have. And I don't know, like, do these things dry out? Probably. Uh, <laughs> But I've been happy so far with this. This is this one's so far my favorite color combination, and they do last a good while. I put this on before I went to Yakima. When did I go to Yakima? Um, like two weeks ago, I went to Yakima. I'm like I'm looking at my calendar. I was like, when did I go to Yakima? <laughs> So this is from two weeks ago. The only thing I have messed up right now is there's a tiny chip on the edge of my thumbnail here, but that's probably because I tried, I was kidding down or something and peeling off labels. That's the one thing I noticed about getting the nails done though, is it's not as easy to peel the labels off as it was before, probably because, is this the right one? Yeah, see this is green over here, that's brown. Um, 
It hasn't been as easy to peel off labels as much as before, probably because my nails now are thicker than they were before. So getting under the labels is a little bit more difficult. So Wendy asked, how do I get myself the journal booklet you're using? Uh, I've, I made that myself. I do have some videos where I show how I put it together and the templates that I'm using for the journal is in my shared templates folder. Uh, I, I, I'm bad at the multi-placing left and right. Okay, so there, there. So if your if your stuff isn't straight, you could always use one of these straightener tools. I really like the metal version of the straightener tool. It. Okay, I thought that the drill had the little knobbly bit. It was just a separate knobbly bit. I do notice that resin drills do have a little bit more trash like little pieces of drills than acrylic dr drills, but the resin squares are much better. I don't notice the difference in the resin and the acrylic for round drills, but it's really noticeable for the square drills. There's just, they just fit a little bit differently together. So yeah, there, that's as straight as that could be. But yeah, no, I made I made my journal myself. But it's 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 complimenting that folks are asking me where I got this because it just I guess it's like I made it nice enough that people might actually want to buy it, which nope, I'm not planning to sell it. I'm still not planning to sell it, if it, FYI. But I'll call that a compliment that you guys like it. Okay, loves to DP, community post where? Oh, I'm guessing I it was in my unboxing from like maybe a couple weeks ago where I got some stuff from Amazon. And I think I must have said that I put the listing for something on a community post. And I don't, the community post shows up on my, on my phone feed. So I think it's one of those things that show up better on the YouTube app than it does on like a website. I don't know how well, I don't know what shows up on the TV version of YouTube. Is it just the videos? But yeah, when there is no, when there is like, like I see a price for something really cheap and I don't know how long Amazon is going to keep it and it's, I haven't made the video yet because it's on the way. I do sometimes post a community post and it's just, it's, it's, it just shows up as like another line on the at least on the app, it just shows up as like another line in the timeline feed or something. But yeah, it's just pretty much just like a message I can put out with a picture, kind of like an Instagram message. I could put out a picture, um, except I can put links on. I don't think Instagram allows you to put links on. But yeah, lots of times Amazon's prices are are not permanent and or just like a limited time deal. So when I see something, I would sometimes post it on there because I'm not going to be able to make the video in time and the thing might not be on sale anymore. All right, let's see. Elisa asks, 
where did you find that size of construction paper? So this is in one of my portfolio book videos. I'm sure the link to the construction paper is on the, the video description. I did just get it from Amazon and I will cut the construction paper to size as needed. The blacks do tend to have the most trash. Like here, this one has like a knobbly bit and then there's just random piece of plastic. Here, uh, those are just drills stuck together. Here's another random piece of plastic here. And then there's a couple of them that are stuck on top of each other. What I do th for those is I just kind of leave them and then in the end, if I really need to, I'll put them between two green trays and just kind of squish them together to break them apart. But I usually kind of just leave that for the very end and then I just use the ones that are not stuck together first. Oh, there's a piece of random plastic there. It's just the sheer static that sticks it to the drills. When you're picking them up, you're like, why in the world is the other one being picked up? You're only pick you're only touching the top of the drill, but I think it's static that's keeping the extra piece of plastic together. And then Elisa also asked what kind of tape are you using to tape the pictures down? I'm using double-sided tape. Um, I do pretty good, I think, at linking necessary the items that I use on the videos to the description below okay let's see so let's see Susan okay so Sue so I did ask a question <laughs> at some of my in my Kidding up from I don't even know when. When is that kidding up? Maybe it was like two kidding ups ago. She asked me if there was such a thing as too much storage. I think there is such a thing as too much storage. Because I'm probably at that point. <laughs> and she's pretty much says that yes, she's at that point too. But... But asking if I'm going to stop... I think, yeah, I think she and I are in the same boat with the storage addiction. <laughs> like, I have no real reason to buy any more storage. I have way too much drill storage. Like, like I, I have enough storage that I can probably kit up 50 or more diamond paintings. And am I ever going to be working on 50 or more diamond? I'm actually way more than 50. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm being modest with my 50. There's, I have more than 50, but I wasn't sure if I had enough for 100 diamond paintings. That's what I was going to say. But I don't know if I have enough for 100 diamond paintings. Maybe I do. Uh, <laughs> and you're like, Joan, when are you going to actually finish 50 diamond, uh, do 50 diamond paintings at once? Never. But I have had storage. But yeah, I think my diamond, assess diamond painting accessory of choice is the diamond painting storage. I just like them. And I'm on the, as long as I have space and as long as I have the budget to buy them, I think it's not really hurting anything other than me being kind of embarrassed with how much storage I have. Um, but I figure... You know, folks have, I don't know, 30 pens, diamond painting pens. Are you going to ever diamond paint 30 diamond paintings at the exact same time? No. Um, but at least I could have 30 diamond paintings kitted up. So I feel like in the end, it's probably a better investment than buying a whole bunch of pens. And if you notice, my pens of choice are... Like, I keep using the same pen over and over. Like, you find the pen that you like, and then you just get it. There, you could try buying more. I'm just usually hesitant of buying more because I have this 
I have certain preferences for my pen as in not too wide because I have small hands and it's really hard to tell from pictures how wide the, the pens are. So I was always buying just the cheaper ones because I figure even if it's too wide it's okay I didn't spend that much money on it because I think the the time I bought like you know a 20 something dollar pen I, I, I ended up not using it as much. So I think I'm fine with the, these cheapo pens. And this I just like this one the most because it fits it's just the right amount of width for my hand because I have small hands um, and it's lighter and I like that because I don't like the heavy pens either especially now with the metal multi-placers the metal multi-placers are heavy so it adds to the weight and if I you know if, if just the metal multi-placers weren't so superior to the <laughs> plastic ones I would go back to the plastic ones I went back to the plastic ones and I was like wow the pen is so light it's like remarkable how much lighter the pen is when you go back to a plastic multi-placer but in the end I was like no I just like the metal one better it, it I just don't feel like I'm going to to break it as much and and it doesn't end up getting the grooves on the like the plastic melt type placer and things like that so so yeah I just end up going back to the metal ones I do really like the metal ones um, my only thing I don't like about the metal ones is the extra weight um, it is heavier and you can really tell when you go back to using the plastic ones but I kind of feel like okay it's like weightlifting <laughs> Okay, so yeah, let's talk about my storage addiction. <laughs> no, um, I do think uh, someone did suggest that I should remake my storage video that I had made back in 2020. My, one of my early, 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 early um, videos in 2020, which if you watch my last Kidding Up, I did say how few people watched my videos back in 2020. Uh, Someone suggested I should remake it now that I have more storage because apparently, yeah. I have gained a bigger collection of storage and ask, uh, and then revisit which is my favorite now that I have more storage because back then I said my favorite was the Harbor Freight and if you've been following my channel recently, you may notice that I don't use it that often anymore. It's just the same, I really do like them. Um, <laughs> That's mainly because they are big and don't have that many containers. So for a lot of diamond paintings, one, it would be overkill or two, it won't have enough containers for everything. So I would have to use two of them. So that's the main reason I don't use them recently. Okay, I'm going to do the carrot. Carrot. Is it this one? Yeah. The problem is there's this other one too. They're both brown. <laughs> of course. Okay, it's this one. So, thank you Susan for being along with me in the storage addiction because I don't know why I'm buying this much. Okay, so Patricia asked, um, have you considered doing the mini diamond paintings from Paint Gem? Um, I have considered doing them. I've been waiting. I've been periodically visiting their website and seeing if they'll go on sale. Mainly because with how small they are, I can see myself finishing a whole set within like a day or two. And, and therefore it's like I, I'm just waiting for them to go on sale so I'm just seeing if I'll be able to buy them for less than $30 or something and then I'll try them out but yeah they are they are pretty tiny so and with how fast I diamond paint 
the price is a little bit higher for the time it would take me to do them. But yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see if there'll be like a Black Friday sale. And then I'll try out two, I think, because I think it's free shipping for like $50. So if I buy two, it probably would be over $50. But I have considered getting them before. It's just, yeah. Like I said, I diamond paint way too much and way too fast, I think, that I would seriously finish finish the set in like one or two sittings. And the price for them is more than I paid for this diamond painting. I paid $15 for this when I used points and this is a big diamond painting. And yeah, more than I would pay for like a bigger diamond art club. Uh, uh, well, a diamond art club if I bought it from Joann's with a 50% off coupon. So, so yeah. Just waiting for them to go on sale. Because I'm one of those, I don't ever need a diamond painting. I just kind of want them. But I have been tempted. But nothing has tempted me enough to pay the, what is it, at $36? for a set yet, so. So thank you, Patricia. But they do look really nice. Uh, Ina asked, Do you make a video when you put them away in your storage? So this was in um, a question about in my when I was unboxing my um, AB drills that I got from AliExpress that I did last week. I think was it was it just yeah it was last week. Uh, and if I made a video of me putting them away, well, part one was Monday's video. There is a part two and three which I've already recorded to finish up putting them all away. So yes, I made a video. And I actually made the video pretty much immediately after I unboxed it. And that's why last week my my video that I wanted to put up on my anniversary, YouTube anniversary, didn't get done because I was making the videos of me putting away the AV drills. Yeah, I just got kind of obsessed with putting away the AV drills. So yeah, there is a video. It's already recorded. Jennifer asked, have you seen the new glitter drills? They look interesting. I don't have any yet, but I wouldn't mind trying them out. When I when I heard, I, I actually read your comment, I, I, lots of times I read the comments and I go look things up right away. I just don't answer them right away. I couldn't find the glitter drills. I think I saw a video of someone unboxing a glitter glitter drills from some Etsy store but when I went to check the Etsy store I couldn't see them um, but I did notice Amazon had this listing for glitter drills so it looked like drills that just seriously just had specks of glitter like actual like you know glitter um, they do look interesting but I don't know how much that would enhance detract the from the diamond painting versus just like an AB drill but it would be one of those things I try out, like if I randomly see it on sale. Everything has to be on sale for me. <laughs> I have enough things that I can wait for sales. I'm one of those people who get, who, who buy things because it's on sale, not necessarily because I want things. Sometimes I buy things because I want them. And sometimes I buy them because I want them and they're on sale. <laughs> but yeah, if I ever see them on sale I'd probably try them out but I'm not gonna be constantly looking for them ah. so thank you Jennifer 
Barbara asked, do you have a preference for black masking tape, but the brand name may be listed on your Amazon storefront. So actually, after I read this comment, I did put it on my Amazon storefront. It's in there. I think I made a separate category for tape. And I just put the black masking tape that I bought. I don't know if it's the best one. It was just the cheapest one, I think, for the yardage. And, and it works. That's what I'm using right now for my black masking tape on this diamond painting. And I like it because I, I find that washi tape pulls pulls off of the diamond painting while masking tape does not. Now regular, that regular, like, I don't know, beige color masking tape is probably cheaper. But I like the black a little bit better because I do pretty much cut out all my diamond paintings and put them into my portfolio book and the black onto black paper so the black masking tape doesn't show the white edges of the diamond painting it shows the black one so when I don't cut the stuff perfectly it's not as noticeable you know these diamond paintings that are hand charted are so much easier um, <laughs> That's why I always laugh when folks complain about confetti on like, like Diamond Art Club and I'm like, confetti? Really? Well, there are some that have like, depending on the picture, there is some confetti, but like something like this is just like, it's so easy compared to the computer generated ones. <laughs> There's so much color blocking. Now, um, like, if you get any of the Dreamer designs by, like, Anne-Marie Bone, I did one. Those things are so, so confetti-heavy. Like, super confetti-heavy. Because it's one of those, like, her, her diamond paintings, I mean, her pictures don't do well with hand rendering. Like, if you start hand rendering that, it will, I think, detract from the image too much because it's a very... There's no hard lines and stuff like that, and that's where hand rendering will actually, I think, detract from a picture is when there's no defined lines. And yeah, those ones, that, now that is confetti. Confetti. But as someone who's first, a lot of the first diamond paint, the diamond paintings I did was from AliExpress. Um which are all hand, I mean, computer generated and tend to be very confetti. Confetti doesn't scare me too much. All right. So diamond painting with sweet tea. You say you use double-sided tape for your multi-placers. Would you demonstrate how you load it into your multi-placer on camera? Thank you. Um, I've actually done it in a whip and chat before, um, but I did just record right before this video in an Amazon unboxing um, of the of the 160 bottle system that I got from Amazon that I put in a community post last week, which I think that video will either be up tomorrow or it was up yesterday um, based off of what when this video is when I'm planning to put this video up so I do I did buy when I bought that um, box I had also bought some double-sided tape because the double-sided tape that I've been using went on sale so I went and bought more and I since I bought the double-sided tape I did demonstrate how I put the the tape into my multi-placer so so yeah it was either in yesterday's video or tomorrow's video whichever day I decide to end up putting that video I'm thinking it's gonna be tomorrow's video or yes yeah whichever day I decide to put them debating debating whether to put it on Thursday or or um, Saturday it but it's recorded because I recorded it right before I recorded this video. But yeah, I, I did put in the demonstration on how to use the double-sided tape. But I think at some point I should 
I should start making videos that are more explainy instead of having them kind of embedded in the middle of one of my longer videos. I should do more how-to videos, but that are shorter, that just point out like one thing and <laughs> one thing at a time or something. Yep, new series. <laughs> But, you know, those videos do take up a little bit more, like, brain power. But, yeah, I think I had someone request how to do a multi-placing video, which I sometimes kind of talk about while I'm doing these. And I'm kind of putting it into practice right now, how to multi-place. But yeah, if you're having a hard time multi-placing up and down, I, it's, I do it so much better than left and right. And and I don't do this thing. I don't do that. I just do kind of a <laughs> plunk it down. And that's what works for me. I'm gonna need more drills. Okay. So, d painting with pities asked, I'm interested in the stickers you use in the logbook. What are they for? Do you make them yourself? And can they be purchased? The blue, purple diamond and the purple one. And then, oops, just needed to keep watching. I also found the download. All right, so she was asking about, like, in my journal, I do have this number here that says 308, and this one says 112. They, I do have the blue diamond stickers as a downloadable PDF on my shared folder thing. You'll have to cut them out yourself. I did cut mine out on a silhouette. Um, and so this is actually Diamond Painting Finish 308. I don't think this video has been up yet. Um, but this, the finish of this, maybe, I don't remember. Oh, that, no, wait, yeah, this is the, this is the video that might be on Thursday or Saturday, depending on when my Amazon video is, I think. So then, yeah, this is Finish 308 for me, when I, since I started Diamond Painting, and 112 in 2022. So that's what those are, and I did make them myself. I need to put back my journal to what I'm currently working on. Um, but yeah, glad you found the download. Um, thanks, Painting with Pities. Let's see. Okay, so Christine asked, um, what are the dots on the clear ruler made of? Okay, so this was in my completion review for my Crystal Canvas Art Designs one, and I had taken out my, um, I had taken out my rotary cutter and my mat and ruler set, and I said I had gotten these dots. I don't know. They, they're called like non-slip grips for quilting. Um, and that's what I got. So, so yeah, she asked what they're made of. I don't know. Non-slip grips for quilting. I didn't, I, I never, I didn't box these on the channel, and I think I probably need to use more of them on the ruler. I put them on my ruler, and then I kind of put them apart, but I think what I need to do, and I only put them on one side of the ruler, but I think what I need to do is put more of them. So they're just like these things. They kind of feel like silicone, and I just put them on the ruler, and I think I need to put more of them on the ruler because my ruler still moves a little bit. So I think, yeah, I just, I think I just have to put more. I have a lot of them. This came with seven, 72. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't know what they're made of. I just found the cheapest one available on Amazon. I probably could have just bought them from Joann's, but I, 
Sometimes it's easier to buy on Amazon because you're not wandering the store, like asking for things when, and then when you're trying to ask for something, you're like, I don't know what it's called. Um, but that's what that is. And you might want to find permanent paint and draw lines on the ruler for rounds. So I think that's, uh, so I was showing my um, birdie stitching finish on that video too and cutting it out. And I said I was going to get a Heaven and Earth Designs, do a Heaven and Earth Designs on a blank canvas for with my round drills after doing that one. And she said, suggested using permanent Paint, permanent paint to draw lines on my round ruler because I was talking about doing do I have it here oh, yeah I do so I was thinking of using this ruler here to do my um, my round diamond painting heaven and earth designs and the reason I was going to use this was because the the round grid for diamond paintings doesn't have that every 10 line thing so I was thinking of drawing putting like marker on this to have like the 10 lines to make it easier for me to see um, where the, the 10 lines are and she suggested to use permanent paint and suggested that I try another one of the birdie stitching ones and to see if it how well it works out yeah perhaps like I was actually I actually had it was actually pretty fun to do that Pikachu birdie stitching one using my leftover round drills. So I might do another one. I still have plenty of round drills. And I do have a couple more blank canvases that Robin had sent me. So. And test out my whole let's try using this. Thing to help me see the grid lines. Thanks for the suggestions. Oh, what am I? I got like three. It was. Thanks for the suggestions, Christine. So Miss Yankee asked, um, "Do I seal them before framing?" So this was in my completion review from last week with the crystal canvas art designs, where I was framing things. And no, I did not seal the diamond painting before framing it. I don't actually seal most of my diamond paintings unless they're off the canvas items that are not going to be protected under anything, which is pretty much all my off the canvas items. So pretty much all my off the canvas items do get sealed. Um, but my diamond paintings only get sealed if they're going to be displayed without a protective covering. So if I'm using the magnetic, um, if I'm using the magnetic strips like across the top and the bottom and then hanging it that way, I will seal it. Or if there's popping, I will seal the diamond painting. But pretty much all my diamond paintings, I don't seal unless it fits those categories. It's off the canvas or it's getting displayed without a protective covering or it's popping. So everything else, nope, no to the ceiling. Because I usually would just put them in my portfolio book or have them framed. So I have not seen it be necessary to seal them. Now, if you live in a climate where, because I did notice it during the summer when it was much warmer. My glue was slippery and I, my drills were popping for diamond paintings that they shouldn't have been popping for. And, but because, but mainly it was because the glue was, it was just the glue I think wasn't as sticky or it was just slippery, more slippery because of the heat. Now, if you live in a climate where that is the case, you might want to seal all your diamond paintings. I'm lucky that most of the time it's cold. <laughs> like, I don't know if you notice, I'm wearing long sleeves already. I'm pretty sure like in some places of the, the in some places it's still like 80 degrees out there. But 
it's it's relatively colder now. I don't know if you can tell I'm wearing long sleeves. <laughs> but it's actually a pleasant temperature. I like this temperature. Like, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. I still don't have my heater turned on, which is awesome. But then I don't have air conditioning turned on, which is awesome. So think about all the energy savings I'm doing. <laughs> So that's thank you to Miss Yankee. Um, April asks, do you have a favorite place to buy keychains from? Um, actually, no. Uh, most of the keychains I show in one budget company, you probably could buy in a different budget company. I really do believe that they get a lot of their stock from the same place. Because a lot of the new, because I do tend to get my PR packages from the new arrivals. And I do notice that a lot of the new arrivals are the same new arrivals regardless of which budget company I'm getting from. So no, I don't have a favorite one. Um, but I have done a lot, so if you would just watch a whole bunch of my kidding up videos, I mean my unboxing videos, you might see some keychains. But yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you which company did better because I really do think they just come from the same places, the same manufacturers, and a lot of the budget companies are more distributors, if anything. So single and placing said, this is the first time I've seen someone using a rotary blade on a complete canvas and I love the finish effect. Have you seen any fraying around the canvas after doing this? Actually, not really. Um, perhaps it's because I have the black tape around it. Perhaps because I do cut pretty close to the edge and there is the glue at the of, that's on the diamond painting at the edge. But I have not really seen that much fraying. But I think it depends on the canvas material. Like this Dreamer Designs canvas material, guess what? It's going to fray. I don't know if you've seen this, but it already frays here. So so this would probably fray, but that's okay because if you cut it directly next to where the, the glue is, it pro the glue will probably help it not fray. Now if you're concerned about fraying, you can always cut it and then seal it at the edges only. Or you can seal the whole thing. But yeah, you can seal just the edges only and that should probably stop anything from fraying. But yeah, I have not really noticed the fraying. Um, but it, like I said, it depends on the canvas material. But I do know Dreamer Designs did come out with a new, a new version. I haven't gotten any yet because I haven't seen a diamond painting that I absolutely must have, which is pretty much nothing. Uh, there's no diamond painting I must absolutely have. <laughs> Although I saw this one, I was like, ooh, I want that one. So I went and bought it, so yeah. Um... But yeah, it, I think it really does depend on the canvas material. If anything, a lot of the budget diamond painting companies have this really like plasticky, I don't know, canvas, hard, stiff, plasticky canvas that actually I don't think frays that much. Um, so maybe that's why I haven't noticed it because I do a lot of the budget diamond painting companies. But yeah, no, I haven't really noticed the fraying. But then I don't, I think the fraying would happen more if, if you handle it. And if you're not, if you're not constantly touching the diamond painting. 
I think it'll be fine. So Paula, so during my kidding up from last week, um, I did say my, my analytics for YouTube and she said, um, enjoyed your video. Surprised that someone knows my age and location. What else do they know about me? So I don't know if you notice when you create a Google account, I'm thinking this is from Google. So YouTube, well, at least from YouTube uses your Google account. So when you create a Google account, there usually is questions that they ask you, like maybe your geographical location, your, your age, gender, um, things like that. And that's what I'm guessing the YouTube is getting from because, you know, YouTube is a Google company. Um, and they could probably tell what kind of device, like, so in case you want to know what YouTube analytics has told me before, and it, there might be more information based off of just like in the U S there might be way more information if you were in the U S as opposed to if you were like, um, a different country. But in my analytics, I've seen, um, you know, the age, the geographical location, what type of device you're watching from. So actually, if you're curious, the most, most of my, the most views of my, of my channel are actually from mobile devices, mm. followed by, I think it was mobile devices, I think followed by like. TV and then tablets and then computer and then I think there's a gaming consoles. It could tell that you're watching from a gaming console. Um, so yeah, YouTube YouTube knows that. Um, I even saw like which state you're watching from, which country you're watching from, whether you asked to put subtitles. Um, and I also know like how long people watch, but I don't know specifically how long people watch, but I do have like a average watch time. So, and then I also have statistics of, of like when people c keep watching. So according to my analytics, only 20% of my views make it to the very, very end of the video. So thank you to the folks still watching because this is much longer than I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, only 20% of the viewers watch all the way to the end. I do actually lose a good amount of viewers in the first 30 seconds of a view. So I think those are just my, the new people watching and they're like, nope, I'm not, they, they watch 30 seconds of it and nope, they don't like that person's voice. That's, that's what I figure. That's how someone would decide not to watch a video. Um, but that's okay. It was a view. So that's a win in my book. And yeah, nope. YouTube knows things, but I think it's mainly from when you create a YouTube account. But you know, do you know how much information we're sharing online? Like you don't know... You download any app and then they're like suddenly asking for permissions for things and you're just like, why do you need that? Why do you need that? Um, this is why I don't actually download many apps. <laughs> this is why I really dislike websites when you go to it, they're like, oh, do you want to wa look at this on our app? I was like, no, I've only visited your website like this one time. I don't want your app. I'm like, I'll just wa look at it on the web browser. Don't need a stinking app. <laughs> but yeah, nope, there's apps for everything now. But there's only so much space, right, on your phone? Actually, there's a lot of space on phones now. Phones actually have so much more space <laughs> than they used to. Okay, there is that. And that's actually the last question. 
that I apparently have not responded that contains questions. When I filter out my comments based off of questions, that is what YouTube considers my questions. If you do want me to read your comment on the channel, <laughs> consider asking a question or put random question marks and see if I actually see it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to finish this up because I do like to show the section I finished. Maybe I did more than half or this was a lot more um, color changing than before. I think there's a lot more um, diamond painting left and right of my multi-placing and I told you I just don't do it as well. And apparently not as fast either. This is a really fluorescent color here. This is like really bam orange. Who needs to be a who needs to be an AB when the orange is very orange? But yeah, it's a very neony orange. This is the type of orange I would want like my luggage to be like. I, I'm like one of those people, if, if I'm gonna buy like luggage, guess what? I'm gonna buy that obnoxious color, like this really bright orange, like neon yellow or something. Probably I would do the orange because the yellow would probably get dirty. Um, but I'm, or I would get, I don't know, hot pink on purpose. Not because I like the color, but because if I'm going to be waiting in the carousel, you know, for my checked bag, I want to see my my luggage. I don't want to have to be like, which random black luggage is mine? Nope. That's why I would probably never buy black luggage. Because everyone has black luggage. I'm, I would be that person with the neon orange luggage. <laughs> because how many people choose the neon orange? Not that many, because... Three, two, one. Because everyone just wants the boring colors. But I'm the person that wants the neon like, I remember my dad got this really ugly luggage before. It, it, what was... I forgot what it was. But it was so noticeable. It was really ugly, though. It, it, was, it had, like, this ugly, ugly pattern. I just remember seeing it, and I was like, it's really ugly, but... But... I actually kind of ended up liking it because it was noticeable. Like, you knew it was that. It, you, knew, you knew that was, that was the luggage. Unfortunately, I think the zipper on that broke. So, no longer in use. Oh, this one's one of the ABs. This one actually has a good amount of ABs. There's six ABs in this one. And they weren't skimping on it. Because I've noticed a lot of diamond painting companies have like one or two ABs and then it's like barely any of them. So you might as well not have it. This one actually has a good amount of AB colors. And if you don't know what AB is, it does have this coating. I'm not sure if you can tell. There's like a met metallic -y coating on it that gives the drills uh, like different shine. Like you can see it's shining a little bit different there, depending on how the light's hitting it. And then when it's on your canvas, I, I prefer actually the ABs to be a little bit more spread out so that it's not just all concentrated into one place. Um, it does add a nice twinkle to your diamond painting when the light hits it a certain way. And that's why you saw me buy three kilograms of ABs, because I like adding it myself um, to pretty much any of my diamond paintings. If I see the opportunity to add ABs to my diamond painting, I will. Um, because one, I feel like it's, it's, it's giving my own stamp on to a diamond painting so no one else's diamond painting is gonna be exactly like mine 
and two, I don't know. I kind of find I kind of find it fun. Um, after you've diamond painted so much, you can you can just go and diamond paint exactly how it's rendered, or you know, add your own personal touch. And I think the longer I've just diamond painted, I just I just enjoy adding my own personal touch. You don't have to. I know some folks find it stressful to to bling up a diamond painting themselves, but I like it. I think I have a tendency to pour too many drills into my my tray. <laughs> okay, one last color and then I'm done with this leaf here. And done with this little section. Okay. So yeah. Man, I did that badly. Okay. This is what I meant. I'm not as good at the multi-placing left and right. As I am up and down. But I do like that. I'm very actually pretty happy with the minimal amount of gapping that's on this one. I think, I think they're doing much better Dreamer Designs because they used to have a good amount of gapping and I think this one I'm actually relatively happy with the amount of gapping in this one. So yeah, there is that done. Woot woot. It feels nice. Squares feel really nice after they're they're done. And you can kind of feel it if you're like, ooh. Cause I don't know if you if you go like do this on a round, it's actually kind of like scratchy because rounds end on a point and squares actually kind of end with a flat um, facet while rounds end on a pointed facet. Unless it's a diamond dot. Those have end on a flat facet too. I don't know if you've noticed diamond dot round drills look different than regular round drills. Oh, my, my Alexa is reminding me to put up my garbage. <laughs> so there it is. I finally finished that. That took me a while. All right, so let's move this up so you can see my complete progress. Oh, and I should unzoom, unzoom there. Move you up a little. So there is my progress so far on this diamond painting here. Um, you do actually kind of see it better this way. So I finished this much. Woo! I still have to do, I still have one and a half sections left here and then I have eight sections over there. I do normally diamond paint like one whole section. It does seem like it takes me about three hours to do because this took me one hour and 29 minutes to do the half section. I think this was slightly bigger than what this section is. So maybe that's why it took a little longer. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I, I don't know how to cut things in half. Um, but yes, there it is. I think it's turning out really nice. I, I, for whatever reason, I like these landscape pictures with houses on them. I don't know why. And hey, look, there's a cat. I think it's a cat. Yeah, it looks like a cat. And then there's a bird right here. Well, there is a bird if I stop shining my light directly on it. <laughs> there's a bird here. And there'll be a butterfly here. I am planning to do the butterflies in crystal rhinestones. I'm not sure if you could tell there's a butterfly over here and I already did that in crystal rhinestones. I think this one is mainly all ABs. I'm gonna do it in crystal rhinestones instead. Um, just because I want, I don't know, I want to. <laughs> all right, that's all I have for today. Thank you for keeping me company while I diamond painted this. And thank you for watching and happy diamond painting. Bye.